Shalom everyone, this is Shlomo Katz and you're listening to the soul of Israel on the land of Israel.com, on the land of Israel.com network. Good morning my dear brother, Rabbi Arya Bramwitz. Shalom Rav Shlomo. So did you cross the Red Sea last Shabbos and are you ready for the Torah this Shabbos? Uh, I'm. I hopefully will be after our little <laughs> after session. Our show. Uh, well, I'll, I'll no tell pressure you on the show or anything. But no pressure on the show. No pressure <laughs> on you. But you've been gone for a week. I've only was only gone for two days. Do you know that? Okay, in my life, <laughs> in my life, it was a week. Yeah. Really, it was a really, yeah, really I'm tangible sorry. issue. I I accept your apology because you. I feel like an apology is in order. I know. I'm, I'm being very <laughs> yeah. sincere right now. I went to Chicago for a few days, and it was a very, very special trip. But uh, whenever I leave, as thankful as I am for the opportunities, uh, any day I miss with my chevra here, you, you, you feel it. And I'm happy it hurts. Uh, not you. I'm happy it hurts me. I'm happy it's hard uh, for me because it's very good. Just like this morning, coming back to learning was just just so special to be, to be back together again. It really helps me understand because, to be honest, when you know there's the idea you shouldn't go three days without hearing the Torah read. Right. And it doesn't always affect me so profoundly if I miss a Monday morning davening <laughs> that I feel like I actually feel tangible shifts in my right. consciousness. That's a reflection on my spiritual standing and not on anything else. But I can get it more. I get the idea more now with our Chabura uh, because I start really feeling uh, more disoriented and confused. It's a very rooting thing. And even this morning when, you know, the... I wanted to just say, okay, at the end, like, what's the tachlis here? And then I said, it's really not about the tachlis. Just, just all of these questions that we're asking, that is right. the point there. Right. So, again, Chavri, you're always invited to join us online. Right now, those classes are all on my SoundCloud page and on my YouTube page. And almost all of them are on Facebook Live. So just find me and join us, but we're, we're working on something bigger to present to the world, but for now, that's, those are the mediums through which we, we can connect with each other. So thank, thank, thank Hashem for that, at least. Um, I always find myself between the Parsha of Kiryat Yamsuf, which was last Shabbos, and the Parsha of the giving of the Torah, which is this coming Shabbos, somewhat of a week of Cholamoid. I feel like it's two big yantus, which it was, because last Shabbos, what we celebrated was like the seventh day of Pesach, crossing of the sea. And this coming Shabbos, we're celebrating the giving of the Torah, which is Shavuos. And in between Pesach and Shavuos, you have Svirat Omer. So you have like a week of Svirat Omer, like a week of the in-between. And it, there's so much to discuss. I always get very overwhelmed when it comes to two parshiot. Whenever we, you know, if I have to give a drush, a, a sermon in Shul, or give a class on Parshat Bereshit and Yitro. Because I'm always like, what in the world, how, how in the world... Where, where, where do you start? Where do you start? Where do you go from here? So I had to just pull myself back down and say, well, so what am I really trying to convey? What do I really want to hear? Why, why is Yitro? Because you get the Torah. You stand on Mount Sinai and you receive the Torah. And it's just overwhelming. It's so overwhelming. Yeah. It's so overwhelming. So something does come to mind, but it's based on a very, very beautiful story that took place about 190 years ago in Lubavitch, in, in the town Lubavitch, where the, the Lubavitcher Hasidim are from. The second Rebbe in Chabad, his name was Reb Dov Ber. He was the, mit, the, the, the Mittler Rebbe, the second Rebbe. The, the, the Mittler means middle, but he was really between the, his father and the Tzemach Tzedek, the third one, the Mittler Rebbe. Very, very, very deep, very prof a profound, also a scribe. His works are massive, very Kabbalistic, very, very, very mystic. And he would speak for hours and hours when he would start, you know, like they say in Hebrew, uh, shulchan. when he would like start his game, he could last for hours and hours and hours of just speaking and talking and talking. Secret after secret after secret. Mesmerizing crowds. His father, the, the Alter Rebbe, Reb Shneir Zalman of Liadi, the founder of the Chabad movement, was known for his sermons to be, his classes to be much more condensed, much shorter, much smaller. So at one time, an elderly chassid who was, this is already after the first Rebbe passed away, one of the older chassidim that used to follow the first Rebbe and now was by the son, overheard a group of young chassidim said, wow, look what we have now. We have someone that can talk for hours and hours and hours, talk Torah. 
the older generation, they had someone he could he didn't he didn't speak for that long. Look look how much better we have it now. And the old Hasid overheard those words. And he said, Oh, this breaks my heart to hear such a thing. He said, You see, when the deeper a person is and the more con- the more concentrated they are in what they're trying to say, the less they have to actually say. Where do we learn this from? We learn it from our parsha. But before we get into, into that, what he was re- referencing to was that the Alter Rebbe was very clear to him what he was trying to say and the clarity with which um, uh, the meaning escorted the words of his mouth was very, everything was together. So he, would do, he didn't have to talk that much. In fact, he could put out a, a magnum opus called Tanya, right, 53 chapters that cover basically everything he ever wanted to tell anybody. Now, can you imagine if you had to put together something, something that included within it anything you ever wanted to tell anybody? Who knows where it would begin and who knows where it would end? So this older chassid said, I feel so bad for you, young chassidim, that now because of you, where you guys are at and where you need to be reached, it takes the Rebbe so much longer to tell them what they want to say because who knows if it could ever get to you. But where do we learn this concept from? We learn it from the giving of the Torah. According to Chazal, according to our holy sages, how much did we actually hear directly from Hashem? When it says we heard God's the voice. The first two commandments. So there's three opinions. One of them is it's the first two commandments, which is Anochi Hashem, look, I am the God. And then the second one is, is um, the, the non, the, the non, like there's the love. Hashem, look, Hashem. So that's one opinion. The other two opinions are that all we heard was the first word, Anochi, and it, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't tolerate it. And the third explanation is that, the third statement is that all we heard was the ah of, anoch, of the aleph of the word Anochi, the hevel, the air, with, with, with his, uh, which in the letter of aleph, like ah, ah, that's all we heard from Hashem and that was enough. And we told Moshe Rabbeinu, please tell him stop, because our bodies were, you know, our souls were leaving our bodies. But what it really comes down to is that when you really, really, really have something to tell somebody and you know exactly what you want to tell them, you really, really do not have to use a lot of words. And I think that that shows how far we are these days from really speaking to people, because it's the world of talkbacks, it's the world of threads. It's the world of column after column after column. Articles getting, on the one hand, shorter and shorter because we see that people have defi- you know, attention deficit disorder. They, they can't listen for so long. But if it was up to you, to the writer, they would write Megillahs every chance they had. Because really, what do you really have to share with the world? When you know what you want to share with the world, you barely have to say anything. Barely have to say anything. There was once a Hasidic master, his name was Reb Mendele of Vorka the town of Vorka, he was known as the Silent Rebbe. Because legend has it, not legend, but this, the tales follow, go as follows, that the Hasidim would sit with him for three, four, five, six hours. They'd just be in his presence, he wouldn't say anything. And then after like hours, he would just say, Hashem Elokeichem Emes. Something like that. God, our God, is truth. And somehow they were able to receive everything they needed from the manner in which those few words were spoken. Also the manner in which the time of silence was, right? There's something about that time they spent with him of also. Of course, of course. Uh, needless to say that, it, it's, it's both. You need that quiet. Because when you f- said that story, I was picturing, you know, after uh, and before we, you give Shirim, often there's the niggin, right? right? And the niggin sort of pushes it in. Right. You know, so I thought maybe that was like just the conclusion that was like pushing it in. Like that's Wait. the end, like amen, you know. <laughs> well, one day, the, Reb, the great Reb Levi Yitzhak Bedechever called in his whole town to shul. And he said, I have something very, 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 very important to share with everyone. So everyone comes to the synagogue and they're waiting for some kind of like, you know, incredible statement or whatnot. Or some kind of like very, you know, impressive discourse. Or maybe he was, had an announcement that he was moving somewhere. He calls them all in in the middle of the week, and they all show up to shul, and they're all standing there, and it's quiet. And he says, 
I just had to tell you all that God really does exist. And then he left. And they went home. So I have this really weird rutzon. Most of the time before I go up to give a sermon here in our, in our synagogue, yeah, I, sometimes I have a smart idea, a nice idea, a good story. But half of me, and I'm not sure if it's the cop outside of me or, or it's really coming from my deepest depths, it wants to go up to the bima, go up to the pulpit, and just say that same thing because essentially, if I really, really, really knew that God existed, would I need all the other stories? Would I need all the other buildups? Would I need all the other teachings that somehow bring me to the same spot? It was only one time in the world when God said exactly, exactly, exactly what he wanted to tell human beings, and it was only one time. He spoke to us once on Mount Sinai, and we heard exactly what God wanted to tell us, whether it was the first two commandments, whether it was the first word, or whether it was just the air within the first letter forming the word uh, the letter Aleph. But that's what make, made Mount Sinai as powerful as it was because look, God spoke to us once since then and we're still figuring out what he meant. That's how powerful that statement was that it lasts forever. And when you really, really love someone, when you really like someone, when you really feel like you're in a state of gratitude, when you really find yourself in a state of wanting to express and you've refined your thoughts, you really, really barely need any words. One time Joni Mitchell met Reb Shlomo Karabach and told him, and she heard him singing a song without words, la la la, right? She was like a big musician in the Joni, uh, yeah. I mean, anyone that's listening to us that was born um, before 1980 <laughs> or 85, you know, knows Joni Mitchell. So Joni, you know, she's not, she wasn't, she's not a, not a Jewish uh, a sister, holy sister, a non-Jewish holy sister. And she said to Rabbi Shlomo Karabach, oh, that's my dream, he, to put out an album just like you just did, uh, the, based on the song, like a, an album based on like a song you just did, where it was just, I died, I died, I died, I died, I died, I died, I Just that. She said, my husband won't let me, though, because it won't, it won't work in the market. People need words. People need a lot of stuff. But really, when you really have what to say, you don't really need that much words. Lahav deal, which means, how do you say lahav deal? Uh, make like, a very clear distinction. <laughs> right. There's a great, great tune by Neil Young called Cinnamon Girl. And the solo is very, very powerful. And the solo is just one note over and over and over again at a certain point in the song. And it's almost like he's saying exactly what he wants to say. He's not confused. He's not getting mixed up. And you're actually receiving it as well. So it'd be such a more beautiful world. I believe we always say people would start talking to each other more. I think it'd be a more beautiful world. People would talk to each other less, but say exactly what they want to say to people. Cool. And I think that um, that'll bring a lot a lot more yishuvada, what we call the settling of the, of the soul, of the mind. I see the social media world really messes with us like that. We take in so much information and very, very little of it has any real relevance in our lives and is really even talking to us. It just stays up there in the chamber of tree of knowledge and only consuming space, not creating more space for us. The Alter Rebbe says there are certain thoughts you could have, there are certain words you could say that don't take up more space, they create more space in the world. They make more space for you to breathe. God said the word anochi, and we've been breathing that word in day in, day out for thousands of years. So I can only bless you and myself to master this art. I want to talk less. Not just less bad things, less in general. God gave me the, the power of speech. I don't want to become um, you know, uh, mute, God forbid. But I do want to know that it's possible for me to think more clearly before I speak about what it is I'm trying to say. Speak less, but when I do speak, it's exactly what I mean. I think that's part of a, a bigger prayer, you know, bichlal for the whole world. We'll be able to hear each other more when there's less, when there's less static, when there's less talking with each other. So do we stand a chance? 
I think so. I think so too. I pray so. I pray so. I, I really want to send a real bracha right now to all couples to really believe in the power of speech that Hashem gave you that if your spouse needs to hear something from you, that you first pause before you say whatever you think you want to say and ask yourself, what am I really trying to say? And trust that the message will come across with less words. That's a hard avoda. Uh, a hard, uh, it's a hard thing to conquer. It's, a very hard, it's very hard. This could be a little bit of a sidetrack. I'm just thinking of one thing. You know, a yeah. year ago, and f for the entirety of my life before that year, I always hated dogs. And it's so fascinating to me, the shift that's happened inside of me with, with dogs. And it's like, I now have this dog named Scoop. And the other night, he somehow got out and he was running around and there was whipping, freezing winds and hail. It felt like a 15-year-old kid was shooting me in the head with a BB gun again and again. And I was running through outside looking for my dog with these whipping, freezing hail in my face. And he's never said a word to me. He's <laughs> never said one word to me. And yet he's still been able to engender this type of love and loyalty that I have for a dog. <laughs> and I said, you know, I really have to reassess something about these words that I like hold and, and enshrine so much. Look, may maybe it does look, it definitely sounds like a little bit of a detour as you began speaking. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, maybe, that, maybe that's a big limud, a big lesson in terms of really how we use speech or not. And we all know it really depends on that and really how we master that one area in our, in our life because words can kill. Not just that they kill people with their emotions, they kill time. They kill time. That term, oh, you, I, I have some time to kill. It's a horrible thing to do with, with an excessive amount of words that aren't really going anywhere. You're wasting everyone's time. So anyway, in the merit of receiving the Torah this coming Shabbos, we're receiving of it again. Hashem should bless all of us to be more in tune with the gift of speech and to trust that when it comes to speech more than any other thing, less is always more. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.